America. My name is Amir Yosef Frimpong. I come to you live every Friday, every Thursday afternoon about this time. And today we're going to talk about how to create John Brown Whites. And that's a project that's very important because John Brown is probably one of the best white people these United States have, has, has generated. He was 100% American. He was Christian. He was white. He was masculine. And if Christian white masculinity looked like John Brown, we would all be in a better place because John Brown drew what he understood of what he what he understood about what it is to be a man what it is what he understood to be a father what he understood to be a christian what he understood to be white and what he understood to be an american in a way that was rooted with the eradication of anti-black degradation with like his christian identity was tied to equality of men on like on earth right and so it's important and this is why you don't read about enough about john brown in your school because he was 100 percent american he was 100 percent christian he was 100 percent um uh you know masculine a father but all of those identities were tied towards uh racial justice were rooted in racial justice so the fact that he was grown organically in the United States means it could happen again, right? And that's the danger. People don't want it to happen again. Because let's be honest, if you're, not, if, you, if you're in the United States and you're not dealing with race and trying to eradicate racism, like you're not, what are you doing? Like you're throwing away your life. You're throwing away your one life, live it, try, like you're, you're just wasting it. And, um, and, these projects are possible, and I will show you how after I hit the opening. To the beach, oh. Oh, yeah. Sound good to me. Never change the ways for the world or the government. If it was the president, then I would state facts. You leave it up to me, I paint the White House black and it can feature in your front. So the work of America is the work of creating John Brown Whites. And I'm, we're gonna, this is going to be a consistent theme of the next few shows about like what kind of institutions you need in order to create John Brown Whites. But it's very important to create white people in the mold of John Brown. John Brown originated out of the United States. He can be reproduced through U.S. institutions, through a sensibility, through the logic of this own nation, if we go about the business of producing them. And people say, irony, me, irony. Me. What do you mean that you have to change the way the white people do family? Yes, you have to change the way the white people do family. It's insofar as white people do family in a way that's consistent with racial degradation, right? If you understand inheritance as um, something you owe, you are allowed to give to your child, without inter intervening justice claims about the society and the people who built the society and who secured what you think of as your property, like intervening in that inheritance, then your notion of inheritance is a problem for reparations. Because make no mistake, when reparations comes, and it will come when we get these arguments out there, when reparations come, it'll include a haircut. It'll include a lot of people, a lot of white people who feel like they should be able to give their property to uh, the people that are their family without any interference from the government or black justice claims, right? So that conception of the family is going to have to go. The conception of the family that you get to teach your child what you think your child should know regardless of whether the information you think your child should know is going to be consistent with black justice claims, that notion of family has got to go. Sorry, we can teach what you want. You can teach your child what you want to teach your child, but the state, and insofar as you remember the state that includes you, has an interest in making sure that your child isn't a problem for racial justice claims, which means we need to teach the, your child the truth about uh, America and America's relationship to black America and white America's relationship to black America, right? So if that's inconsistent with your understanding of what it is to be a family, that someone else or yourself is going to teach your child like the wages 
and the exploitative systems that are consistent and, and that have made black America degraded and uh, America itself needs to attune, uh, atone for, then your conception of the family has to go, right? There are certain gender ideologies. Um, if your conception of the family is tied towards men protecting women away from scary black guys, which apparently is an entire conception of the family, which is an entire ethic, um, then that conception of the family's got to go. That, that conception of the family has to go, right? So John Brown modeled a conception of the family, a conception of Christianity, and a conception of American white masculinity that was rooted in anti-black racism in, in, in eradicating anti-black racism. And, and that is the conception of, you know, American whiteness that needs to be metastasized. I mean, not metastasized, that needs to be uh, spread out and, and cultivated, right? So people say that, well, you know, you think the permanence of racism, you're a critical race theory theorist who thinks the permanent, permanence of racism is intractable. I'm like, well, the permanence of racism is a matter, uh, isn't a matter of biology. There's nothing defective in their DNA. The whites have fine DNA. It's fine. They're part, like, it's, it's, it's not a DNA. It's cultural. They have a culture that has built an antibody mechanism against internal critique, right? Every now and then they'll spin out a John Brown in the same way that uh, a Greece spun out a Socrates, but it's built to abort those, <laughs> um, those kind of whites, right? So it's a cultural problem. So we need to go at the points of cultural struggle and change the way the whites do culture. We need to take them into cultural receivership uh, because they're bad at it, given their own. So they have, you know, notions of family, notions of Christianity, notions of gender that all mutually reinforce each other to sustain a quality of anti-black degradation that I think uh, it's in the nation's interest and definitely black people's interest to disabuse them of, right? And you can't do this directly with political policy itself. Um, I mean, you can, but this isn't a political project. This is a social project. Right, because we're changing the way that white people participate in society, and if you change the way they participate in society, um, the like the the better politics will follow. So you use politics the way they to change the way they participate in society, not necessarily to change the way they participate in politics, right? So, for example, there's a lot of ways to be Catholic, right? You go to South America and Catholic. You, you, there are a lot of ways to be Catholic that does not like. hold up abortion as the most important part of Catholic identity. They're social justice Catholic. They're a great worker Catholic. There are some like hardcore, like no nonsense Jesuits in Latin America. Um, there are lots of ways to be Catholic that actually will tell you that abortion, we need to get about the business of making sure the poor are not degraded, right? Like there's a lot of ways to be Catholic. Like it's a peculiar American version of Catholicism that puts abortion as the only thing that Catholics care about. And that will conform all other issues to um, its, you know, its, its dictates, right? And by the way, if you think abortion is the most important part of politics, then both the Democrat and the Republican Party will use your fetish for abortion, either for or against, to police and discipline all of your other political um, opinions, right? Because that means if you're a Democrat... Democrats don't have to stand for anything else, and they can actually stand against everything else as long as they are slightly more pro-choice than the other party, right? So the Democrats and the Republicans will use your fear of abortion and your fetish of abortion to actually conform your politics in a way that I find unbecoming. And I tell people, look, black people are poor. A lot of black people are pro-life. They're just not the criminalized poor women for, like, they're just not the kind of black pro-life people who use the law to punish women for being poor or not wanting children. They're pro-life in a different way. Lots of ways to be pro-life. <laughs> and there are lots of ways to be pro-life that don't uh, create more criminals. There are lots of ways to be pro-life that make sure the kids get all the resources they need. I think my favorite way of being pro-life is to uh, try to get parents $900 a month per child. I think parents should get $900 a month per child because child children shouldn't be punished for their parents' poverty. 
And that's pretty much how much it costs to raise a functional child. And if you don't think so, it's probably because you're not raising a functional child, all told. But there's actually other information. There's other, uh, other uh, data sources that'll tell you. That. I think the USDA um, but put together, they put together a, um, a study every few years about how much it, it takes to raise a functional kid. And $900 a month. So that's how much it takes to raise a functional kid. So if we want a nation of functional kids, we should give everyone $900 a month per kid to raise their functional kids. Just think of all the enrichment activities that would go with that. But anyway, John Brown Whites. We need to change the way white people think about their institutional relations so that those institutions can now be uh, mutually supportive of anti-racist efforts. Because as it stands, those institutional relations all emerge to support a white supremacist society. Right, you got the, the white Christian church emerged to support the Klan. <laughs> right, that was a great feeding ground for the Klan, and like there was a symbiotic has a symbiotic relationship with the Klan, not with the rest, reparations movement. Right, so um, you got to change the way the white people think of church. You got to change the way the white people think of gender. You got to change the way they think of family, and um, there needs to be a left or a reparationist. Honestly, let's put a uh, a um, Uh, draw a narrow bead on what it means to be a reparationist church and what it means to have a reparationist family that uh, understands what intergenerational justice means, that understands like uh, legacy wealth and legacy poverty. If you don't know, old money is a lot of money. <laughs> um, and old poverty is a lot of poverty, right? Both materially and culturally. So um yeah we need to just create john brown whites and use that as a model of white american masculinity and what white american christianity means and what white american family means because you got his sons in it everybody like anti-black racism was the organizing principle of life and make no mistake right now white supremacy and white nationalism is the organizing principle of white life um, it takes a lot of labor and work to uh, to kind of not see what's in front of your face, which in Georgia is an internal colony of 33% of the population that's black just being, you know, have their entire life overdetermined by their proximity to white races right, and white power. All right. So... Um, by the way, if you don't, if you support me talking the way I'm talking, go ahead and go to www.funkyacademic.com and kick in five, fifteen, or fifty dollars a month for me to kind of keep doing what I'm doing. And if you want more people to talk like I am, you should give me money. And the reason you, because the only reason you don't find more people talking like I am is because like it brings a lot of heat. I get the death threats. I take a lot of heat, um, and people don't want that kind of heat but they want the wisdom. And so we, we need to prepare the world for the quality of both wisdom and heat <laughs> that I bring, right? So when you talk about the permanence of racism, it's not about a defective biology. It's a, a, the whites having defective biology. It's about the whites having defective culture and culture can change. But part of the deficiency of white culture is that it doesn't feel like it needs to change and is resistant to changing, right? It has its own little antibodies that attack any change agents, right? But there are shared institutions. And if you leverage power at the point of struggle against those shared institutions around schools, churches, gender, um, uh, to some extent, the workplace, if you leverage power around those shared institutions, we can change culture and thereby make America whole to fulfill its concept as a nation of free and equal people. Right? So people say, what's wrong with the white family? Well, insofar as the white family is not consistent with upholding the reparationist agenda like John Brown's family is, insofar as there's not talk about the limits of generational wealth transfers and even intercommunity wealth transfers, racialized wealth transfers, because let's be honest, if you go to a white wedding, if you go to a wedding of a white person, you'll find like one token black person who's not me and just a bunch of white people and all the money that gets passed around and all the, the connections that get passed around there, that we're just locked out of. So we need to talk about what that means. 
So if you have, if you understand your family, if you understand your family is not consistent with breaking up those networks for your kid in a meaningful way, then you have a distorted notion of family that's not consistent with racial justice. If you are okay with raising a son or daughter who is against reparations, then, but you're not okay with raising a son or daughter who is like, has a casual use like heroin habit, then your notion of the white family is distorted. Then your notion of the white family is distorted. You need to raise your kids. If you're not raising your kids with the same aversion to white supremacy and white nationalism as you're raising your kids to have an aversion to methamphetamines, then you have a pro like you you have a screwed up nation. You have a, a, a notion of family that's not consistent with racial justice, right? And that's a problem. We need to change your understanding of the family because your under the your understanding of the family is a problem for America, and your understanding for of the family is a problem for uh, racial justice or for black communities. So, yeah. So when I talk about how family, white families need to change, yes, that's how white families need to change. They need to get the same aversion because John Brown's family, he made sure as a part of what he was to be a father, what he was to be a father is to raise children who were anti-racist. Positively and aggressively so, militantly so. And if you don't understand that as your conception of a father, your problem with fatherhood, um, like, like, yeah, your idea of fatherhood is going to be a problem for, for racial justice and those who struggle for it. All right. Thank you for the time. Someone wants thoughts on Kevin Samuels. Kevin Samuels died at 56, 57 of a heart attack. And now as a thin person who carries a little bit more stress than I should, that moved me more. Then that moved me more than the fact of uh, uh, Kevin Samuels, like what he said. I actually think Kevin Samuels is the net positive for the discourse. Um, I did a few videos on it. You can go back and look at, at videos on Kevin Samuels. I think he was a net positive. I think ultimately he was a quality of capitalist that didn't actually wasn't really serious about upending the system and securing black community justice, especially for working black people. But um, he at least told some sort of truths about the state of play that people need to hear so that we can, I think, upset the game. He was trying to teach people to win the game. Uh, I think we need to upset the game. Um, but, and he was honest about the state of play. So that's like, I was fine with Kevin. I think Kevin Samuels was a, was a net, was a net positive for the community and for the culture. Um, and I'm sad to see him go, but mostly I'm sad to see him go because he was like in his mid fifties and he dies of a heart attack, which means there's a, there's a expiration date on me that I, I'm not really comfortable with. And if you want that expiration date to extend a little bit farther then maybe nature and society, um, has been ordained, go ahead and go to www.funkyacademic.com and kick in five, 15 to $50 a month. All right. Thank you for your time. Um, and I will see you next week.